I believe a lot of men would go overseas and be with a woman who has the traits that they see that that makes them happy, but she might be a prostitute. Mm hmm. Yep. That's she, true. she, she, she might be things that you shame women here for being promiscuous and things of that nature but it's not the promiscuous actions of them here that's the biggest issue it's the fact that they're unkind with it what's up brother can you hear me yes sir how you doing i'm doing fine yeah, i've been so watching good. you for a long time and Appreciate to be you. honest with you uh i i'm really into you how you articulate your points and Appreciate I've watched you. the yellow flags. I watched a bunch of your stuff, but um, I kind of wanted to hit the, I want to kind of speak on the passport bros just a little bit mm -hmm. because of the fact that I myself just went out the country for like two weeks, not too long. Mm -hmm. And because of the fact I picked up on some of the aspects that I'm not used to being in the US while mm. being overseas. Mm. So I think the perspective that we are not being completely honest with as guys are we we state how much we want from our women to be feminine. And and we that's just a quoted thing, just feminine. And then we start to kind of break it down and submissive and soft-spoken and all these things the reason why i think a lot of men focus on the passport bro aspect is because as you were saying in the previous parts of the conversation in their culture how they are seen by their men they naturally come off a little bit more docile in comparison to the u.s and for us, because we're so used to the toughness of the women here, the smallest bit of softness that comes from them is amazing to us. Right. So even with that being said, we, we speak about how much we care about how they look and then them being feminine. But let's let be honest, I believe a lot of men would go overseas and be with a woman who has the traits that they see that that makes them happy, but she might be a prostitute. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's she, true. she, she, she might be things that you shame women here for being promiscuous and things of that nature, but it's not the promiscuous actions of them here that's the biggest issue is the fact that they're unkind with it mm. yeah now that's real because uh courtney michelle and i we we disagreed on this a while back we um we were going back and forth about like what men are willing to sacrifice and um she was saying that men care a lot about whether or not a woman likes them or loves them and i was telling her that you know we just like kevin samuels would say we'll go down in looks we we will go down in like and love if it means respect and cooperation all right and and fortunately or unfortunately sometimes uh, i think some men have gotten to the point where they feel like you know I'm, i'll just i'll just pay for the uh, cooperation and respect, right? You, you, I was watching um, uh, James Sexton and uh, uh, Orion Taraband. They had a conversation, and uh, James Sexton brought up a guy that one of his clients, super rich dude, who was paying for certain uh, like sugar babies, and he wasn't even fucking them. Like it wasn't even a sexual relationship, <laughs> but he said it did something for him to know that he was their superhero because they would be stressing over bills and just yeah. like that, he would fix it. Whereas he had a wife at home that he could never do enough for, right? Ooh. So I think that's also part of the conversation is missed sometimes. Like, yeah, some of these women are prostitutes and, and the whole nine, but there's a validation that they're able to provide that 
unfortunately, a lot of our men have been starved of, even by our own mothers. Because we're never good enough. We're never enough, yeah. regardless of how many statistics we uh, overcome and, and however many like accolades we, we gain. And that's a part that nobody brings up and nobody acknowledges as a main driving factor that's leading men, despite the levels of prostitution and single motherhood in other countries, to say, I'm going to just go there instead. Because at least she, you know what I'm saying? That's real. Yeah, and then uh, another piece of part of the conversation earlier on that I heard was um, a guy asking you about where do you put on the scale uh, of beauty or yeah. <laughs> yeah, and to be to be honest, I think uh, uh, honest in the conversation, the flaw of us as guys because we're very visually driven. Yeah. It's the fact that even if you put us in a room with a bunch of women who had the qualities that we would want to be as a wife, we would vet the woman and see, all of them have the same qualities, but they all look different. We will exit out so many of these women due to the fact we're trying to look for the one that looks the best. Mm -hmm. So even if we say, and that's that's the nuance with guys, we say we want all these great traits in the woman, but we walk into the store based off what the store looks like on the outside. Mm -hmm. We don't stay in the store if we are mature enough to realize the inside of the store looks like shit. Right. And you know, that, that 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 that's why I've been so um I've been so critical of the manosphere because I think the manosphere overindulges at times in accusing women of that, that trait. But the reality is we do it too. It's a, it's a human trait, right? It's, yeah. it was the saying, if, if you're, if you're pointing a finger for pointing back at you, like it, it's, it's a human trait to uh, over indulge and over uh, prioritize aesthetic. Right. And, and unfortunately, you know, it seems as if women do it more, but we do it too. I mean, jobs do it too. If they have mm -hmm. two equally qualified candidates and one just happens to be handsome, he's probably gonna get the job. <laughs> That's the or or he happens to be likable in a way that you're not. He's a good now. They call it a good culture fit. That's the reality, right? So, um, yeah. you know, we do it too, and I, I think that if we're honest about that, we can start incentivizing some of the behavior that we claim to want from women because oftentimes we're just we're just talking about it we don't really want it we still want the ig model with a bbl that stink no 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 and you know funny thing uh i know a lot of the guys talk and things of that nature and i'm not sure how many guests or people you have that speak to you from the perspective of they were married and divorced so i've got a couple yeah yeah, for for myself, I was one of those aspects married to a beautiful black woman mm -hmm. um, two years ago, a year and a half ago, divorced. Um, one of the things what came from that relationship, I was in that marriage for five years, but what came from that relationship, I started to understand about myself mm. was that I was seeking, and I think a lot of us are, are, are people, seek out the love that we didn't receive from our parent, our mother, and our mate. And then what we do is, because the bar is so low as to what love looks like from that uh, uh, parent, mm. the mate only has this small bar to be above. And we, we many times, if we find them early on in life, we fixate on them. Yeah. So um, with that being said, I have realized when I was going through divorce and I went through therapy and things of that nature for myself, I said, hey, I even called one of my boys and said, yo, I think I got a problem. I don't pick people that care about me. I pick people that I can care about 
and I'm fighting for them to care about me because that's what I grew up in. Facts. Facts. So, you know, that, that, that's so many men's, uh, 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 Fight, right i remember uh, i can't remember his name off the top of my head but he gave a ted talk and he he was a black man he talked about how his ex-wife would weigh him before she gave him any pussy like she 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 wanted him to lose weight or he wasn't gonna get no ass and apparently she ended up cheating on him and the whole nine which is like I obviously bet. But yeah. he he and what why I respect him so much. He connected it all the way to his childhood and that feeling, and I think it's a it's a feeling all all too familiar to masculinity because we have to cultivate our value, which assumes we're inherently unvaluable, right? We're we're inherently worthless, right? You have to cultivate your va- your value in athletics, in in work, etc. Right? So you become accustomed if you are if you're not careful to um earning everything mm-hmm. including affection right and even even if you watch movies right um the 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 sometimes the the woman doesn't like the protagonist off top mm-hmm. you got to do certain shit and even uh uh what's his name um LL Cool J and Deliver Us from Eva he had to even work for her he had to do some extra cool shit on top of the cool shit he already was right so we're accustomed to that story and thinking that She's not supposed to like me until I perform and I tap dance well enough to earn her like, because I don't even like me because I don't think I'm supposed to like me for just being me. I'm supposed mm-hmm. to like me based on my ability to make her like me. Yep. Well, effectively, we're jesters. We were raised to be jesters right. and we're trying to find our humanity as men when we get older and it's very confusing because when we're out in the world we're men which means that we are not as human as most people because that's how we were raised Mm -hmm. but on the flip side as well we're trying to connect with a person a woman in most cases for everybody else i'm talking about them but for uh (laughs) what we do here yeah yeah (laughs) but uh connect with women and from inception they were allowed let me let me see i would say it's more normalized for them to be uh erratic in their emotions which the emotions in itself is speaking to the point of the humanity yeah because we all feel it's the fact that we as most men try to learn to turn it off Whereas most women are allowed to move with the motion. And when we become adults, it becomes hard to cross that path because we want you to turn your feelings off some some because it's too much. Mm. And they want us to feel more because we don't feel enough. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something I tell women a lot. Like, uh, uh, I think it's going to sound weird, but I think women are the uh women are the most ideal people like women women are people in every way every sense of the word women are allowed to be human mm-hmm. um but when you think about when you consider especially through a historical lens what masculinity is masculinity is not humanity masculinity is beyond humanity don't cry when you feel pain that's not human Mm-hmm. Right. Work when you're tired. That's not human. <laughs> right. Fight when you're dying. That's not human. Right. Go go against go against every instinct in your body that's telling you uh, that this act or this uh, uh, continued act will not be in your best interest. But you do it anyway. That's not human. And I think mm-hmm. what's happening nowadays is uh, for the first time in a long time, men don't have to be as inhuman and as we've had to be to build the world. Right. But at the same time, just like, you know, baby might not have experienced it, but they're still scared of the dark. There, there is that, uh, uh, epigenetic memory that we have that still makes us, um, believe that we still need to be that same 
man that was necessary to build the world. And in, in some ways we still have to be. And mm-hmm. I, I tell women oftentimes like it, it, it's, it's unfair to you guys, or to us, for you guys to have this, um, the same level of human expectation that you're allowed to have on us. Because, because everything that I, I remember there was, um, a metaphor, um, that I thought was brilliant. Um, this, uh, what's his name? Dr. He wrote a book called, uh, the, the boy crisis. Can't remember his name off the top of my head, but anyway, he, he, he gave the analogy of a buck, right? He said, you know, uh, in, in the wild, um, male bucks, you know, have to compete for mates just like every other animal and mm-hmm. the buck that, uh, the female deer choose to mate with is typically the buck with the biggest, largest horns. And those big, large horns also help them in battle when they're fighting other bucks, right? Yeah. So the bigger, the larger, the more elaborate your horns are, the um, easier, the faster you're going to mate. Um, simultaneously, the number one killer of bucks is arthritis. So the very thing that is giving you the ability to mate and create that legacy that every organism on in reality is looking to create is the very same thing that's killing you. And that's masculinity. We yeah. have to be everything that kills us. Right. But we don't, we, we also don't get that sympathy or understanding of, um, you know, this is why I have to be like this. There's just a dismissive energy at, at times. This is the issue I have with women sometimes is that you should be more like me. I don't have that luxury. Yeah. I, I feel you. Um, when it comes down to the aspect, because the first part I want to just bring or state things about men that I don't think too many men are being completely honest about. But to the point, something you said to another brother uh, on the panel, you stated to him that you believe, and I agree with you. Um, women of other cultures, if they were allowed to their own devices to choose how they choose, they will choose just as chaotically as we see. One thousand percent. Yep. And to speak to it, I I think about it from like an opportunity cost. A woman from a different culture would pick the man as financially uh, literate, financially advanced and working hard because she knows she's securing safety and uh finances for her and her offspring down the line Mm. whereas in our culture we walked away from the aspect of the security from us as men the government and the assistance that can be aided is the thing that the women depend on most cases mm-hmm. to provide that security and that that safe haven because we lost that value of safe haven from us and it's the state and it's the government. That's why it's different because if yep. the government didn't do it, then women would still depend on us, but it's not because they want to be with us specifically. It's because we are the best meal ticket for their offspring, for their lives. And if shit goes to hell or high water, they'll be just like the Asians taking you for every last penny. Because right. the, the plan from the very beginning was I'm going to be with this guy and we're going to have a wonderful life because I know he can make sure we have a wonderful life. 100%. But if he messes up, I'm going to have a wonderful life. Mm. And I'm going to find somebody else that can fit the mold for what I need to continue this. But I'm I'm not going to leave yeah. this without taking something. It, it sounds counterintuitive, but our problem is that we marry for love. Love was never a I mean, marriage was never a love contract. Marriage, marriage was never a uh, emotionally based contract. Marriage was a uh, financial, economic uh, cultural contract 
And I think, you know, that's the big, that's the big difference because other cultures still prioritize those things. So like how I feel about Jimmy is secondary, tertiary. How my dad feels about him is what's the most important. Are we the same religion? Mm -hmm. Right. Did, 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 do we have compatible careers? Right. Do we have the same idea of the type of kids we want to raise? But I think in our community uh, in particular, uh, because we weren't being raised, so we were being raised by television, um, our view of reality is art. Our, our, we, we are imitating art as our reality, as opposed to art imitating reality. And I think that's why we are so hyper fixated on, am I happy? Right? Mm -hmm. How do I feel? Without understanding that that shit vacillates, that shit, you wake up feeling different. You don't make decisions based on how you feel. You don't make plans based on how you feel. Happiness is fleeting. Fulfillment, joy, those are goals. But again, the, 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 I, I guess what, what we have to come back to is like, you don't learn those things in a vacuum, right? And th that's the reason why we don't know those things. Yeah. You have to have an older... Uh, OG, you have to have somebody, you have to have a legacy, not even just one OG, you have to have a legacy that teaches you that. And unfortunately, compared to our Asian and, you know, Hispanic and European counterparts, I think that's where uh, we lack. And, and oftentimes we are so fixated on just the aesthetic, right? The pageantry of love. The pa and I say this even, even as a Nigerian. We are notorious for that. We be throwing the most elaborate weddings, but the motherfuckers aren't happy as hell, right? Mm -hmm. They got married because of their parents or because of the looks. He's a doctor. She's an engineer. But, you know, so I think this is the first time we're podcasting, we're having conversations where we have to start telling the truth and yeah. then start prioritizing what is the main thing and how do we get there as opposed to uh, just performing or as opposed to just... Uh, trying to satiate our childish adolescent uh, fantasies that we watched in some teen teeny bopper movie when we were twelve, right? So, yeah. but yeah, I appreciate you, brother. I gotta, I gotta go on and head out, but uh, I will be doing more streams soon. So uh, definitely pull up, man. All right, man. Yes, yeah, sir. Appreciate right. you, brother. All okay, right, man. Peace. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end, please click that like and subscribe button. Also share this with somebody that you think would gain value from it. Click the thumbnail at the top if you want the full video. Click the thumbnail at the bottom if you want a video that's closely related to this. Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys for watching. Check out some more of our content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.